Welcome in 07 Citizens Black here from Casa Black Gaming, and this is a review for the Origin 400i. My reviews are meant to be packed with tons of info, given at my normal no time wasting format, but with my own of the people perspective as I'm not a large content creator or paid affiliate. I'm just an average player who works a normal job so I try to watch what I spend. Now if you like what I do and feel like I deserve it then please like, subscribe, and comment to tell me which ship review you would like me to tackle next, or to just talk about why you love this ship so much, or as is the case with many folks, why you think this ship needs some work, as I know many of you believe this about many of the ships as do I. Now with the housekeeping out of the way let's get to the actual review. So first here on the screen are the stats for the 400i, which is defined as a large luxury pathfinder craft, which we will touch on more later in the roll section. The ship's weapon complement is two size 4 pilot controlled hardpoints which come gimbaled stock with size 3 guns or you can swap those gimbals to have size 4 guns if you feel the need and of course for all of my loadout recommendations be sure to check out my channel for more in-depth loadouts and info. The 400i also has two manned remote turrets with two size 3 guns attached to each. There are four missile racks, two of which have 16 size 1 missiles and the other two are carrying 16 size 2 missiles, giving you a nice barrage of missile power with 32 missiles in total. The ship dimensions are 56 meters in length, 32 meters across its beam in width, and 12.5 meters in height. It seats a crew of 1 to 3. The cargo is 42 SCU of storage. The combat speed is 185 meters per second, with SCM speed being 1,250 50 meters per second. The ship claim time from the ASOP terminal is 35 minutes flat, but you can get this down to around 6.5 minutes by paying. Its other ship components are 1 size 3 shields, 3 size 2 coolers, 3 size 2 power plants, and 1 size 2 quantum drive. It has 20 thrusters for thrust and maneuverability with 2 size 2 hydrogen fuel tanks and 1 size 2 quantum fuel tank. So with the 400i and classes of this size, you are having to enter through elevators with multiple doors, which for some can be a deal breaker. So I'd like to give you the times, and in the case of the 400i, you actually have two options when entering the ship. Of course, you have to wait for the ramp to come down, which is a huge chunk of your time. And then once inside, you go through a door to get to the elevator or ladder access, and then another door into the cockpit. Now, regardless of which way you decide to go, the elevators or the stairs, it still took about 20 seconds from outside to your seat, which isn't bad for a ship of this size. The 400i is a luxury pathfinder vessel and with luxury usually comes spacious living quarters. Now while the bottom deck is for engineering and cargo, the upper habitation deck houses some nice living accommodations and I want to start at the back of the ship first where this is a very nice open curved glass window that spans the back of the ship with the view being sort of ruined by one of the remote turrets but that's okay because while the view is somewhat blocked you would rather that gun be there than not. Now there's a map table where routes can be plotted at some point in the game's future, but as of now this feature is just for looks. Now just inside of the map area is a nice kitchen complete with cabinet and sink and a little fridge with knives and what looks like future goopy food nozzles similar to what they had in the Matrix and I'm sure what comes out of them tastes just like tasty wheat. Now I do like what looks like plants growing under the sink which shows an excellent use of space and offers up a nice little herb garden for your tasty wheat. Now across from the countertop area is a nice little booth seat with a display on the table which clearly shows that screens will still be a thing at the dinner table even in the future. So moving on down the hall on our right we have crew quarters for two. I do love the under the bed storage that all of the beds on the ship have and of course there are some very large storage containers in the center of the room once again emphasizing function on this ship. Now across the hall we have the captain's chamber which I actually really like over the Carrick's lavish captain quarters which I felt the crew quarters on that ship had some wasteful space. Anyway the captain's quarters here are compact and just perfect with that little under the bed storage sliding out again. 
The desk area is also nice, and another thing I really like in both of these quarters is the use of windows. Even if only at the top of the wall, it's a nice touch because I believe that just staring out your window while traveling through the stars is something everyone would rather see than some of the submarine enclosures that some ships offer up, which would be enough to drive anyone mad. Now finishing up the captain's quarters is a closet right next to the desk area, once again showing off how well done the space is utilized here. Now of course this deck also has the elevator and ladder that go down to the bottom deck. And then we also have a bathroom, which again this is nice to see that there's one bathroom for all crew members instead of the excess privileged captain's bathroom from the Carrick. Now I know the Carrick is bigger than the 400i, and on big ships a captain probably would have their own bathroom, but again this just feels wasteful if you take yourself out of the role playing aspect and just think about gameplay and what else could be on the ship in those large wasteful spaces. Would you rather have two bathrooms and extra large crew quarters or another turret or maybe more cargo space? Now anyway, this bathroom is nicely done, vampire mirror be damned. It's single person at a time, use is fitting for a ship of one to three passengers and that's going to do it for the living quarters tour. Alright, so the 400i is one of the better ships in regards to paint options with five colors to choose from. There's Afterglow, which is a black with orangish red trim and looks particularly stunning. Then there's the Calicata paint, which is black and white, giving off a Stormtrooper vibe. The Polar paint is nice with white and bluish gray mixed in with the black. Stormbringer is one we see on many vessels and looks pretty good here as well. And then there's the Stratus, which is the last and again is mostly white with some gray and yellow trim. The 400i is a luxury pathfinder, meaning it's meant for exploration, but also capable of defending itself. Its main function would be to explore new areas or systems and arrive there in style, yet with only Stanton in the game right now, you won't be doing much in the way of pathfinding. But it's a nice little daily driver for some, and with its 42 SEU of cargo, you can do some smaller trading runs as you see here. Now the garage that opens up is only good for like hover bikes and similar sized vehicles so think of it as your luxury yacht with the ability to grab your motorcycle and quickly get over to a lavish dinner party off the coast. Just don't get there too early because you know those with style always arrive fashionably late. Now when fully crewed the ship's decent sized shield and two man turrets and two guns controlled by the pilot can do some decent enough damage but still feels lacking when compared to other ships that are smaller that have similar size firepower. Now how hilarious would it be for pirates to see this luxury yacht and then suddenly get completely annihilated because this ship had a few more boomsticks in its arsenal. I don't think we'll ever see this so it's still decent enough at doing some bounties. Now I did not do anything higher than MRT so I can't really say how effective it would be against those but I don't see tons of people doing harder bounties in this thing anyway and a majority of my viewers seem to enjoy it for just scooting around the verse which is a decent enough purpose. Star Citizen is currently lacking systems, as in systems in space. The lack of systems means this ship is missing the Pathfinder feature of the ship, which is a major feature. This ship was originally shown with pyro footage, so I think the devs were trying to sell people on this being something you would use there, but again, with its lack of firepower and with pyro being such a hot spot for criminal activity, I would not be using this as a Pathfinder in known dangerous systems. The 400i is a large ship. I mean, certainly not as large as Carrick, but its parts are mostly size 2s and 3s, which starts to see the cost ramp up a bit when upgrading, not to mention this ship has 3 power plants and 3 coolers, which while you do not currently need that many of each, once a component's revamp comes into play, you'll probably want those, which will easily push the upgrade cost of this ship well over half a million credits. Now with the bare minimum build I posted for this ship, you're still looking at around 231,000 credits, so be ready to spend some just to get this puppy up to speed. 
Alright, so the first part of this video has been mostly facts. Now we come to the part where it's more subjective, and although I try not to really push my opinion too much on others, I'm going to give you my take coming from a reasonable place, trying to avoid hyping things for the sake of hype. So how does the 400i fare on the eyes? This is easily one of the most beautiful ships in the game. I love classic cars, especially from the mid-50s to mid-60s, like Corvettes and such, and the swoop on the sides reminds me of those. The curves and smooth contoured lines just reek of style and what really grabs me about this ship is just how Star Warsy this thing looks, like something George Lucas himself would have clearly approved of since he himself is a classic car guy, which we've seen in his decision making with ships he's had in his movies. The 400i looks amazing and there's not much more that can be said for it, and as discussed earlier, even the interior is nice and well thought out and organized, making this ship stand out easily in this category, and it's why so many wallets opened up last year when it was shown off at Citizen Con. Alright, so how does the 400i handle while flying? Now, I forget when looking at it that it's a larger ship, so therefore I sometimes expect it to handle a little better than it actually does. It's a little draggy when trying to turn, both in atmosphere and in space. It certainly is not one you'll go doing loopy loops on, but you're not supposed to. For a ship that is somewhat similar to the Constellation line, it does fly better than those, but while flying those large bulky ships, you expect those ships to handle like they look. Yet, I was duped time and again by the 400i because I'm so enamored by its sleep design that I kept expecting it to fly like its smaller siblings, which it's not supposed to, and I'm not knocking it, just expressing my time with it. I thoroughly enjoyed flying it, and even if it was not Johnny on the spot with my turning, my wife and I did alright in combat situations, and landing and flying over planets was not bad and actually very fun. <laughs> Now this is the category that gets many people, myself included. As I alluded to earlier in the intro to the video, I've got a day job and do not just spend limitless money on games and so I really need to feel like something is worth it to me in order to plop down more than, you know, $100, $150 on a game. Now worth is a relative term and as many people have pointed out to me, paying more than $45 for JPEGs is hardly worth it and difficult to say so, which I sort of agree with. I mean, people waste money on so many things. I don't I don't even know how much cigarettes cost nowadays, but I know there are people who buy them by the carton, which in my eyes is a waste of money. But I'm sure that those people think it's not. So again, here we are with what something's worth. I don't think this ship is worth $250. <laughs> I bet you probably thought I was going to defend trying to buy it myself or thinking it was worth it based on my whole cigarette spiel. For me, for it to be worth that much, it would need to be able to carry larger vehicles and maybe have a bit more storage to do some better trading. I know this isn't that type of ship, so I'm not wishing it would change. Well, maybe I am, but that'll come later. Just saying that for me to buy a ship for anywhere near this amount, I need it to be a daily driver that can do all of my favorite gameplay loops, or at least most of them. But I don't just judge those who loved the ship and eagerly bought it without a care in the world, and those who war bonded it and paid less for it, I'm really happy for you guys because while it's sleek and a thing of beauty, I just cannot justify the real money cost to buy it myself. Now end game at almost 6.5 million credits, that's still a bit much and might not be something I would save up for until we know there will be less wipes, but there are many who earn credits like candy, so if that's your thing, the price is pretty competitive with others in similar classes. Alright, so as I just discussed, I'd love to see this ship stripped of its Pathfinder items and given more firepower and a larger cargo deck. If this thing had those two things in it, I'd be hard pressed to turn it down. I also would not mind some better paint jobs with less white, but that's just a complaint I have about a lot of the ships in the verse. But what about you? What kind of variants or changes would you like to see done to the 400i? Alright, so that's going to do it for the ship review of the 400i. I enjoyed flying the ship, but I will also enjoy melting it down to regain my Taurus back, or perhaps I will try out the Constellation Phoenix next. Of course, we have the Drake Corsair coming up soon, which is another ship I'm looking forward to. Anyway, we also have CitizenCon coming up soon, and I'm dying to know which ship they will introduce, and I plan on picking it up, if only to test it out and create some videos for it to let you guys know what I think. Now, I think most of you know what to expect from me about now when it comes to what I like and how it impacts my reviews. I do try to remain honest to myself and hope that I don't offend anyone, but more so I hope to show others out there that it's okay to not be into every ship that comes out, as some ships are just not meant for everyone. Anyway, remember to be kind to your fellow gamer, listen to others even if you might not agree with them, and stay positive citizens.